Hello, class of 1970. I am Keener Fry, the Executive Director of the University of Wyoming Alumni Association. With the 2020 homecoming activities being canceled this year and the 50th club reunion on our campus being postponed until the fall of 2020-21, we will sure miss all of you all coming back to campus. While our plans may have changed, one thing has not, and that's the pride and the spirit that the Wyoming community has for the university. We are looking forward to welcoming you back in the fall of 2021 when we can celebrate in person as we have for 90 some years. Please take advantage of some of the virtual offerings and enjoy homecoming this year, albeit in a very different way, but nonetheless know that you will be joined by thousands of cowboys and cowgirls all over the country. Hello, Susan, could you introduce yourself? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm Susan Clark Caney, and I was at the University of Wyoming from 1966 to 1970. I graduated in 1970 with a degree in international studies, um, never leaving the city limits of Laramie to get that degree, I might add. I would love to be able to come back and do what they do now because they have so many more opportunities to travel internationally. I knew that I wanted to be a librarian, so um, after I graduated, I went to Kansas State Teachers College and got my master's in librarianship, then came back to Laramie. My first professional job was as a science and technology librarian at the brand new science and technology library down underneath the mm -hmm. plaza in between biology, the biological sciences and the physical sciences. In a month, I got my degree. I moved all my worldly possessions from Kansas to Casper, from Casper to Laramie, started a new job and got married. Why we did it that way, I don't know, but at the time it seemed to be important to get it all in. That's right. So Don and I were in Laramie till 1977. Uh, we adopted our daughter, Michelle, while we were there. And in 1977, um, we were offered the opportunity to go to Las Vegas and he worked for the Bank of Nevada there. Uh, at that point, I was uh, wrangling a toddler and we adopted our son Thomas while we were in Las Vegas. So that was pretty much my life while we were there. Um, in 1980, we moved to Salt Lake City. All three of those were sort of culture shock to go from Laramie to Las Vegas, Las Vegas to Salt Lake. And we loved every place we were. And there were Wyoming connections in all of them. I think when we were in Nevada, UNLV joined the WAC. I'm not positive about the dates. But when we moved to Utah, we had access to Wyoming sports because they played all of the Utah schools. So we've always had a Wyoming connection. You know, thank heaven we didn't have to move to New Jersey or something because we, mm -hmm. we would have had sports withdrawal. When we were in Salt Lake, um, I did do some library work, but I did it on a volunteer basis at our kids' school. Uh, when we moved here in 1984, I did pretty much the same thing because we had chosen for me to be home and raise kids and volunteer and do all those sorts of things. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the nice things about coming back to Laramie is that we were back to Denver is that we were close to Laramie. Um, we would even go up and go to the basketball games. We'd meet friends in Longmont drive to Laramie, go to the game, drive home, get home at midnight and get up and go to work. But we always wanted that Wyoming connection and it was always important to us. The end of my career was uh, with um, Denver Public Library and with the Inglewood Public Library. And one of the things, um, my husband was involved in an organization called uh, University of Wyoming National Ambassadors and he had gotten himself a license plate that said UYONA. And he sold the vintage brown Jeep that it was on about the time I bought a car. And he said, would you like my license plate? And I said, sure. I have met more people, more Wyoming people with that license plate because they want to know what it means. I was at work in the parking garage in Inglewood one time and a man came up and he, he thought it was disrespectful. He thought I was saying nah or something like that. <laughs> And he was a very proud UW cowboy, and he was going to tell me that that wasn't okay. 
So um, we've always kept a strong Wyoming connection with, throughout all the places that we've been. When did you become involved serving on the library board and really immersed into a lot of the uh, those activities? Because I know in, since 1997 and when I first probably met you all, uh, when I was here the first time, that uh, you all have just been active on campus. I, I originally, I think, thought you lived in Laramie. Uh, you all showed up so often. But uh, when did you get involved with the library? I can't tell you what year, but it was the beginning of, uh, of the library board. Okay. So I've been on the business board for 35 years. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I've probably done this... I don't know, 12? I don't even know when the building was built. I can't remember. We started right before the addition to Co. Right. But I know you've been on, on campus a lot with that. I mean, a lot of meetings and a lot of important work through the renovations and improvement in the library, for sure. Well, somehow our name is on every list because I came home one day and there were T-shirts that said something about the pony. And I said, what is this? And Don said, oh, we're supporting the, the horse. Yep. <laughs> I said, Really? So you uh, all always have for sure. So when you were at UW, uh, were there some uh, really influential uh, professors, faculty members, administrators, others who uh, really were an encouragement to you at UW? Yes, there were. And the first would be John Sr. He taught um, honors freshman English, and he's probably the brightest man I've ever been around. Mm hmm. We had three books for the semester, one by Matthew Arnold, one by Aristotle, and one by Plato. And he could open any of those books to any page and lecture as though he had practiced it for weeks. Right. And he asked us to think about things that we'd never thought about, think about things in ways we'd never thought. We had to justify our opinions. And he was a take no mercy person. You couldn't just fluff by him. So I learned a lot about thinking from him. Mm -hmm. He was amazing. The second person was Agnes Milstead. She taught uh, library science in the College of Education. And even though I wasn't in the College of Education, I did take some of those classes. And as soon as she found out I wanted to be a librarian, she had a hold of me. Um, she took me to the Mountain Plains Library Association meeting in Denver and introduced me to the Dean of the Library School at DU. She did all kinds of extra things um, to encourage me. And when I came back and went to work, she was thrilled. She said, now we're on the faculty together. And when she would leave town, she would ask me to teach her classes. At 23, that was terrifying, but I learned to do it. Mm -hmm. She also, um, she was gone one summer and she asked me to teach classes in the correspondence school. So now you really know how old I am because that predated online. And then when I got on the library board, we asked Agnes to be on the board. And we struggled a little bit at the beginning because all of the boards are, develop are advisory boards and we're a development board. So we were sort of trying to figure out what we were supposed to do. And there were some meetings that I didn't think I handled very well. And Agnes came up to me afterwards and she said, you know, you did a really good job. I'm proud of you. And I mean, I was in my late fifties, probably. So she was still mentoring you. She was still mentoring. Plus, she was an incredibly generous person, both while she was living and after she passed away. Um, so not only was she a mentor, she was a model, a role model. That's great. And so, thinking back to your college experience, I think most UW graduates uh, could always identify one or two places that were pretty special to them on our campus. Uh, how about you? What was a, a special place for you? I assume the library was, was pretty darn special, but maybe there is another place as well. It was. I asked my son today, I said, where do you think would be special to me? And he said, Mom, it'd have to be the library. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And it, and it was. If I was in a good mood, I wanted to be there and see people and do all the things. If I was having a down day, I would go about five o'clock at night when almost everybody else was eating and the library was quiet, and there's a particular kind of light that comes in the windows mm -hmm. uh, that time of the evening. And I would head for the periodical stacks where there were 100-year-old magazines, and I would entertain myself by learning something new. And then I would go to, 
I don't even know what it was called. There was a little place in the basement of the union where you used to be able to get food mm -hmm. across from the bowling alley. All right. I think it had three tables in it. And I would go there and eat something that they didn't serve at either the sorority house or the dorm. And life was good. So that was probably my favorite place. What sorority were you in? I was in Alpha Chi. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, as we, we kind of wrap up here, we've alluded to it. Uh, Susan, uh, you and Don have just been uh, really immersed uh, into this place. And I was uh, really enjoyed hearing you even from Las Vegas and Salt Lake City that you still stay connected with UW graduates and then being closer in Denver, of course, being accessible to a lot of different activities. Uh, why has it been so important to stay involved as an alum with the university? First off, we were absolutely blessed. I mean, I met Don there. Um, that was my first professional job. His first real job was in Laramie. Uh, we adopted our daughter there. And we made many of our, to this day, closest friends. Mm -hmm. So because of all that we feel that we received there, um, we feel that we're obligated to pay that forward to someone. And the other thing is, I think most universities like to trot out their shining stars. They trot out the physicist or the researcher or the astronaut or whoever it is. To me, the success of the university is all the decent people, the thousands of them, that graduated from there. And they go home to their communities and they go to work every day and they volunteer in their kids' schools and their soccer coaches. To me, that's the strength of the university. And I want that available for my grandkids. Um, my first granddaughter graduated from Wyoming, um, I think three years ago. And she got many of the things that we did. She has longtime friends. She goes to Laramie. She loves the out of doors. She has a great work ethic. I mean, she got a lot of the things that we wanted her to get when she went there. Granddaughter number two is a freshman in college this year, but because this year is crazy, she's studying from home. Okay. Granddaughter number three is nine, and she informed us that she's going to Wyoming and be on the rodeo team. Okay. And her cousin is nine, and she's going to Wyoming, but she's not going to be on the rodeo team. <laughs> and I think they both have it right. I think you're right. But we wanted them to have the same kinds of opportunities for growth and friendship and fun and all kinds of things that we did. And unless we support the university, that won't happen. Uh, we have to hold the university accountable. That's one of the things. Um, mm -hmm. But we want those opportunities for our grandchildren and all the kids that they'll be going to school with. Well, Susan, we sure enjoyed learning more about your uh, UW experience, your experience thereafter. And I know your 1970 uh, classmates will enjoy hearing your story and it will remind them of many of their special memories uh, back on the UW campus. So thank you for spending this time with us today. Thank you, Keener. It was fun.